You're listening to the Ask Drone You podcast. You ask, we answer your drone questions. Whether you're here to turn your passion into profit or you simply fly for fun, we're a community of learners and teachers who aspire to achieve greatness. We are Drone You. Hey, everyone, and welcome to another interesting episode of Ask Drone You. My name is Paul. My name is Rob. Looking forward to today's discussion. I think that uh, it will be... Uh a little eye-opening. Um, always enjoy getting into subjects like this that are actually a little bit, uh, I don't know, a little nerve-wracking, I suppose, in some ways, and maybe hit a little close to home for us in particular, but I think it'll be good information. Thank you for the question. If you have a question, ask droneu.com. We would absolutely love to hear from you. That's why we're here. A hundred percent. Yeah, no, we do appreciate those questions. Bring them on. We love them. And uh, today's uh, sponsor for this show is going to be the Props Flight School, which was built for drone teams and programs. Look, we could have created DroneU Enterprise, but we wanted to create an educational platform to support drone teams vis-a-vis managing multiple pilots at once where they can deploy chronological trainings developed to service numerous industry verticals. But no matter which training they deploy, all of their pilots will be able to cross-pollinate from one department to the other as they've created operational systems, administration systems, and communication systems to ensure their success. If you are looking to start a drone team or program or simply refresh it, you've got to check out the Props program, propsflightschool.com, powered by DroneU. Hi, Paul and Rob. This is Jamie Deanna. My question today is regarding partnering with surveyors. There is some general impression in this industry that surveys may be slightly hostile to um, drone pilots, or at least some of them, uh, as they may see us as a threat to their service offerings. Um, I've sort of done things in reverse here. Uh, Since I'm a mortgage guy and I've had a lot of free time on my hands this year, I have not gone out and hit the streets yet, knocking on doors with my binders. I've learned um, first uh, in that I have the drones and have watched Paul's mapping class, I think, three times now, as well as just self-educating through Google and YouTube videos and things of that nature. So I am fairly proficient in GCPs and checkpoints and coordinate systems and scale constraints and all that, enough so that I think I can offer a, a service to surveyors. I use a P4 Pro with a PPK kit, soon to be using a Mavic 3 Enterprise with an RTK module. Um, my question is specifically, would I be more likely to offer my services to a surveyor to supplement their service because they may not have a 107 or want to learn drones? Or would I be more likely offering my services on site with a surveyor signing off on my work for a fee? Any thoughts on that would be greatly appreciated. Thank you very much. Thank you, Jamie. Really appreciate the question. Uh, It's a good one. You've kind of got into a lot there that we will do our best to cover. I think the first thing that uh, Paul and I think about as we discussed answering your question is when it comes to this paradigm of helping surveyors with your drone skills is, is the juice worth the squeeze, right? And to use a a line that uh, we've started using a lot more that we got from a friend of ours, but um, that's a really important question here. And so you mentioned that there might be a little bit of a a hesitancy. That's not the word you used from surveyors to get involved with somebody like yourself. I think that's probably true. We'll talk a little bit more about that, but I think maybe even the larger issue is the state boards. And Mm. I think they might even be more protective because they see that as their role, right? And in some ways it, it is their role, than the surveyors themselves. So there's a lot to consider here. And uh, to start with the ending, just not sure it's going to be worth it. Well, and I think also to your point, as we discussed in pre-show, that there might be a lot better opportunities that are more profitable and that are more kind of quote unquote worth it. Because even if you do get into those types of jobs, if you're working underneath a surveyor, for example, you're probably going to want a more robust aircraft, you know, something like the Wingtra 1 Gen 2, where it's a super efficient methodology of creating geo-reference maps. Um, 
I think this question came from uh, one of the posts inside the Drone You community app where I had provided a disclaimer of saying, like, don't offer surveying services unless you're a a licensed surveyor, you know, showcasing the personal experience that we've had here. I mean, even of discussing it on the show of getting, you know, pushback from various uh, state boards. It's like, hey, we're just here talking about it. That's unfortunately... um, uh, one of those things that's protected by the First Amendment here because we're not making threats against anyone. So it's still protected. That said, I think Rob's point on is the juice worth the squeeze is extremely important to focus on because if you have existing relationships with a surveyor and you can offer quote unquote surveyor assistant services where you're working directly under them and they they are the licensure, they are the ones signing off, et cetera. Um, I think that that's still reasonable. We see surveyors do that all the time. And I think we've even seen some uh, Drone U alumni offer surveyor assistance services and being very clear on what they do and what they can't do, what they can provide, what they can't provide. Because it's important for pilots to know under a lot of surveying law, and again, it varies state by state, you cannot claim accuracies. You cannot claim you know, a GSD, et cetera. And it's important to know how to uh, utilize certain GPS or georeferencing tools. Even more important to know how to, you know, adequately input those tools into your data products. And even more important to understand your quality reports and how to visualize and discern the quote unquote true accuracy. Because I, you know, when we teach the mapping class on exercise five, where we're talking about how to export polylines and whatnot, which by the way, Pix4D has added some additional outputs on those polylines like DXF files and whatnot. But that said, if you actually take that exercise, which when you measure the scale constraints, they come out almost perfectly. I mean, within one one hundredth of a foot. But if you take that map and you throw it into Esri, ArcGIS, QGIS, Global Mapper, or any other surveying software, you'll find it's off six, seven feet on the latitude on not only, you know, left and right, but, you know, north and south. So that said... And vertical, right? Yeah, no, it is. And the important thing to know is on that exercise, Pix4D will show you a great georeferencing accuracy. But when you take it into a third party app, you realize that that's really not valuable, which is why in the mapping class we teach all the time to truly discern accuracy. You've got to put the map or the data product in a third party software. Even if you have checkpoints, all that you're really measuring is the delta between the known points and the checkpoints. And if they were shot with the same device, you can still input lots of error into the map. Now I've so you can see how complex this gets. A hundred percent, and what you don't know may sink you too. A hundred percent, just just FYI. We've actually trained a lot of surveyors, and um, I always tell them, look, the most important a- uh, aspect of georeferencing your maps and models is going to be how you utilize your ground control points. And depending on the type of aircraft and GPS system that you're using, there are met- various methodologies in offering that. So Mm -hmm. um, it's complex. And again, as Rob started the show with, the juice may not be worth the squeeze. And I'll continue with the disclaimer that you can't offer surveying services um, without being a licensed surveyor and they will come after you. Um, Although we know a lot of the surveying laws quite outdated too. I mean, you look at um, certain states and they're like, the stitching of images is quote unquote surveying. It's like, so everyone's shooting a pano or a panorama on their iPhone is now a surveyor? That's no, that, that clearly not. Yeah, that, that's not a survey. So <laughs> right. that said, I just I personally I would recommend you stay away from it. I just you know, there are so many arguments that we could make uh, regulatory wise. But looking at the nitty gritty business decisions, it's a high uh, cost input. The uh, ability to get jobs is difficult. While they are high paying, you can get many other high paying jobs that have nothing to do with surveying. Mm -hmm. And I mean, we're seeing big companies too start to realize the impacts of regulatory restrictions on this. And we're seeing, you know, construction companies just saying no georeferencing at all, none at all. We just want to use the ortho as essentially a frame and a time lapse. 
But and so what you've been learning, though, Jamie, can still be helpful in that realm. Yeah, right. 100%. I mean, maybe you don't need to go to the depths of georeferencing, but everything that you're learning can give you a head start on doing that kind of work as well. A hundred percent. And so we definitely wanted to talk a little bit about and end on what can you do with this knowledge and experience that you've been working towards. And we had the opportunities podcast we just did. I think it was the last one. But there's other things that can be done with this knowledge that he has, such as... Totally. Working with engineering companies, working with construction companies, working with architects, um, public works. Like, there's so many opportunities. General contractors. contractors. Yeah, roofing contractors. Sorry to interrupt you. No, no, no. I interrupted you. <laughs> um, no, no. It's, it's, it's important because there are so many industry verticals that utilize orthomosaics that have nothing to do with drawing property lines or discerning legal boundaries at all. And in my eyes, if you're doing either one of those things, that can get you into, a, into some trouble. So Yeah. Unless, again, you know somebody in the business or you just you make a contact and, you know, you decide to, to go for it and you go to maybe some conferences or something and you talk to people, you might be able to convince somebody that uh, you can help them because you probably could. Yeah. Right. We're not saying that you can't. It's just that some of those barriers might be bigger than they're worth uh, to, to try to get over. But uh, we we have the roofing class that if you're a member, by the way, a drone you member, you get a substantial discount on that, that we partnered with a fantastic roofing company out of Ohio, very successful 50 year old company to create this class to teach you how to do commercial roofing inspections. And there's some uh, some mapping knowledge that goes into that. That's really important. So there's a lot of things that you can do. There, are, there really are. And honestly, I think that there's a lot more recurring revenue jobs that are going to be mm-hmm. much more worth the quote unquote squeeze than trying to do this stuff. And I will say thank you for bringing this question in because I think it's something that um, a lot of pilots need to know as this is where YouTube has really uh, driven pilots into trouble of, you know, knowing what you don't know, essentially the black swan, as we call it, or not knowing or you don't know what you don't know is the black swan. And with a lot of videos on YouTube of like, here's how to do a drone map, drone deploy, single grid. Here we go. It's like, no, 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 no. You know, so um, be careful. Greatly appreciate the question. Um, just recommend staying away from it, frankly. And uh, yeah, I mean, that's that's really all I've got on it. So it's going to be really interesting to see, too, if the surveying community evolves, uh, especially with the infrastructure bill and everything that's going on. Um, it could really... Um, it could really turbo or boost the implementation of drones in surveying and the regulatory mess that's around it. So I think it's something that needs to be clarified. Yeah, absolutely. And I'm sure that will happen in time. Um, But also we've seem to have gotten a sense that's a very vague statement, (laughs) but nonetheless, (laughs) that the surveying companies are going to trend towards using internal people. Yeah. Right. Mm -hmm. And which also makes it a little bit difficult to break into unless you're looking for a career change, Jamie, and you want to go become a surveyor. (laughs) Um, It's a lot of schoolwork to become a surveyor. Yeah. Schoolwork and yeah. Working for the man for a while and all that good stuff. Yeah. Yes. So um, I think obviously this particular caller sees the opportunity, though, because mortgage surveys are a very big deal all over the country. True. Um, So. uh, So, yeah, um, I hope that we provided a good message and provided good, uh, valuable, specific feedback as to there are other opportunities out there that pay more, that offer more recurring revenue. You know, it's very hard to break into. It's expensive to break into because if you're going to be doing these large surveys, you're typically going to need, need a drone that can, you know, map anywhere from a thousand to say 5,000 acres and, and georeference it without throwing out a lot of control points, you know, uh, again, drones like the Wingtra, which we just added to our don't crash course list. Well, it's in progress in editing right now, but, um, yeah, on all honesty, there's much better opportunities out there. I would say save yourself the headache. Um, there was one very hard lesson that I had to learn, uh, with my dad who was a lawyer and sued all sorts of companies, um, mostly uh, suing unions on pension and labor liability. But one hard lesson I had to learn with him, because growing up in a f- household of lawyers, it's like, oh, you don't get what you want, sue. And and my dad was like, that's the one thing I don't want you to get out of this family. The one thing I want you to understand is 
is it worth it? Mm -hmm. Is it worth the headache? Is it worth the stress? Is it worth the money to prove your ego right? Because in most examples, it will not be worth it. Um, And I think that that's really important to understand because as the son of a lawyer, we have been taught to avoid lawsuits at all costs because they just simply are not worth worth it. Um, I know we live in a very litigious society, but I think that that's something to remember. If you do run into problems with surveying boards, I recommend that you reach out to the Institute of Justice as they are aggregating a lot of state level cases to uh, go in front of the federal courts to decide this once and for all. Because um, as we've seen with a lot of uh, government kind of things, they're always pushing the limits of what they can actually do. And oftentimes we see that they push those limits and say, come and stop me and prove it in court and then we'll stop doing it, which I really, really think kind of goes against the grain for what America stands for. But uh, we are obviously not on moral high ground and uh, there's no point in really even bringing it up other than to say that I think everyone serving boards, states, and pilots could really benefit from clarification on how they could work together because I think there's a great opportunity here. And I think a lot of people are missing out on uh, economic opportunity uh, across a variety of states. Mm -hmm. So if you do run into problems, Institute of Justice, they will help you out. They're very, 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 very helpful, very useful. And uh, I hope that we provided good information here. So Yeah, me as well. Thank you again for the question. AskDroneU.com. Is where Jamie asked his question, and of course we would love to hear from you as well, whatever's on your mind. Um, Don't forget, there's probably a lot of other people that are thinking the same thing and just don't feel comfortable sending the question in. So be the one that does. Definitely. And we appreciate everyone uh, who are drone you members. The, the engagement in the app is on fire and it took a little while for the uh, transition off of Facebook onto our app, but we were adamant about protecting people's data and uh, protecting our pilots and their businesses as a whole. And I'm just so excited to see how it's flourished. So yeah, me if, too. if you're great. not a drone, you member, that is one huge benefit. So it really is. Yeah. We'd love to join. Love you. Have you join us. Definitely. Well, we'll see you next time. And thank you again for joining us for another episode of Ask Drone You.